Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Wednesday edition of the Daily Market Commentary. It is June the 6th, 6, 6, 18. Hope everybody's having a great morning and had a great trading day yesterday. I am your host, Chuck Fulkerson. For those of you new to the channel, do me a favor, click that subscribe button down below so that you get the updates as they become available. Uh, for those of you also new to the channel, we look at the same 10 to 12 futures markets every day, identifying potential trading opportunities, but the most important thing is we leave our lines on the charts. Holds me accountable, holds you accountable, uh, and allows you to see how trades develop over time from an educational perspective. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm going to start with the S&P, uh, as I always start with the S&P, because, you know, we just we just move top to bottom, right to left, or left to right. It's what we do. It's what we do. So let's take a look. s and is up five this morning. Uh, yesterday, I had spoken about that we had our breakout above this line, and I removed the breakout line yesterday, uh, but we we are above this, uh, this area here. Uh, and by the way, just because we have a breakout doesn't mean that like on a pullback like this, you should get stopped out, right? Your stop, your breakout, your stop goes always below the last pivot. If you remember the rules that we that we had covered in our breakout in the breakout session that I did, oh geez, it was months ago now. If you haven't seen that, there's a, there's a, a, a a session that I did a live uh, YouTube on I don't know, a couple months ago that you can find on the breakout rules. Uh, but we are continuing to march higher from that area now. The thing to consider, though, and I will, and I will bring this up for just a minute. I don't normally dive this deep in in in, in the morning, but looking at, look at XLK uh, and look at XLF, and I and I bring that up for a specific reason. Financials, uh, technology, which is XLK, is what's driving this move. Financials are taking a hit, right? Industrials are kind of flat. Basic materials are kind of flat. Uh, utilities are down a little bit. Um, consumer staples are kind of flat. Uh, consumer discretionary is kind of flat. So what do we see there? We see that the market is being driven by technology. Uh, that is that is a, well, I guess I could just do this, sector spider comparisons. I've got a, I've got a chart of all the different sector spiders, right? Over the last, uh, over the last couple of days. And if you look, this is a, these are all daily charts. Consumer discretionary is up a little bit, but consumer, consumer, uh, or technology is up 11% while the rest of the market's only up, uh, you know, it's, it's comparative market is up a much smaller percentage. Uh, the, the market itself is up 1.97% over the past, um, this is the year to date. So year to date, uh, we're at 1.97%, you know, up. But look at technology, up 11%. Financials are down one. Base materials are down two and a half. Consumer staples are down 11.8. So, so your your bellwether value funds, if those of you that have value funds and value uh, things are getting are are not performing anywhere near the quality that the market is doing. And so just keep that in mind when we look at the long-term stability of this movement. It, it's not the whole market. The whole market isn't what's going up. It's technology that's going up, which is why our top performer is the NASDAQ and and the small caps, right? Uh, somebody asked me to take a look at, you know, what the what the small caps were doing, the, uh, the Russell, uh, you know, kind of what it's doing. And looking at the rut, you know, it's it's also continuing its move higher. Now, I am saying I am seeing a little bit of a momentum slow, right? Just looking at the at the chart, I've got you know slightly higher through here, slightly lower here, but it's just slightly. It's not. I wouldn't consider this a full momentum slowing as of yet. Um, But this is, you know, the, the this one when I when I moved to the daily chart, we, you know, we're at our all time high in the small caps, and we're at and we're just about there, I think, in the Nasdaq on the daily. Yeah, so we're we're sitting right there at that high in the Nasdaq, and um, you know, whereas I think we could get a little bit of reversal off of this all time high. I'm not sure if we're if it's going to come. I'm not willing to take it as of yet. 
So what does that tell me that I'm doing today? Well, if you're, if you're still in, by the way, from our breakout, and our breakout was way down here, then congratulations, you, you've, you've picked up a pretty nice move on the breakout. If you're not still in, where do I get back in? Well, uh, a couple of things you can look at. We, are ha- we do have a little bit of a rising trend line on the NASDAQ. So on the NASDAQ here, we've got a little bit of a rising trend line. Same thing in the uh, S&P. Uh, we've got that rising trend line. If you want to connect it using the Wix, we're pretty far extended off of that line. Um, so if we come back to the NASDAQ, you'll see that we're actually running a lot tighter to that line, and it's not as far extended. Now we're getting a little bit of a bull pullback, so you might actually want to go down and find that on a 15-minute chart for a better opportunity to enter. Now I will say this, on a 15-minute chart, we actually have a lower swing high. I, I certainly don't have, I guess a, technically a little bit of a lower swing low as well. Um, but on a 15-minute chart, that's certainly not going to change my trend direction. But I could still look for you know, a good chance to get back in. And what you may just want to do is, is, is get long when it gets back up above 71.95, right? Wait for it to start that little reversal. Uh, although I think you could get a, a, a decent little reversal down, you know, right on the trend line where we have old resistance right through here can become that new support, if you will, and we get a little pullback into this range. That could be your move. So what I would say is you're, you're, if you're not in it yet, you're going to have to kind of be reactionary and pick it up off of a bounce because you're not getting pullbacks to high quality areas, right? You're just, we're just not getting those. Those pullbacks to high quality areas just aren't there and they're not going to be in a parabolic move, right? You've got to be a lot more patient and, and just be okay waiting. Uh, so let's move to crude oil. So crude oil, uh, we did not get a reversal at, uh, at the level that I anticipated yesterday. If you look at it on a very small time frame, you see that we got a touch into the zone and then a, a pretty strong move out, but we didn't, we weren't able to hold that. It, it just kind of came out, came back into it and then failed. So if depending on, once again, everybody manages their, their, their accounts differently. It depends on how you move your stop. Did you move your stop down once we hit the break even? Because this was our opposing fair price value area. If you did not, then you probably got a little bit of a stop out. Fairly small level overall. Uh, but what this has told me is I'm not going to touch crude until it gets to some of my bigger levels. Uh, I'm going to leave it be until it gets to some of my bigger, my bigger levels because uh, that was one that I put in yesterday that was, I don't want to say forcing it a little bit, but it, it, it seemed like it, it, uh, it made sense. It was actually more designed to be a target off of this potential reversal area here, uh, whereas in reality, that's, that didn't make it to that reversal area. So uh, no big deal. Gold. So gold, we got a really nice breakout yesterday, and it ran all the way up to this fair price value area. So hopefully you're able to catch that that gold breakout. Now we've put in a little bit of, call it a double top, uh, and we're starting to come back down. So I'm going to leave the bottom of this triangle in play because I think that this is still going to be a very valid uh, a very valid play. Now if you missed it and you want to get a short uh, as it's coming back down, looking to the 15 minute chart. I think you've got an opportunity. I don't know if it's going to get back up here or not. It's actually moving pretty well right now. Um, at this 1300 level, you may have a decent bite at the proverbial apple. Moving over to bonds. Bonds were still in between our areas. Not a whole lot to add on there. Uh, the Aussie is continuing. It's, uh, it's continuing its march higher. Uh, off of really this this bigger chart down through here looking at it though on the back to the hourly time period uh, you know if you want to get long you're going to want to look somewhere down in this region for a potential reversal to get to have another shot uh, another chance to get back in I'm going to put an area down here that we may not hit today or really anytime soon but I'm going to leave it in play because I think it's a, a pretty valid area the euro uh, <clears throat> bouncing off of, uh, we had had, I'd established this a long time ago. I mean, like when we first started doing the daily market commentary, this weekly level here, we put in the reversal candlestick. That's a strong reversal candlestick pattern, right? It's basically a hammer candle with a little bit of a top. Uh, and we got a higher high. So now if you trade candle to candle style, uh, on the weekly chart, you're long, you're in, you got the breakout above the high in the overnight hours, then your stop would have to be below here. So it's a fairly wide 
stop, obviously, because you're looking at the weekly chart. But there's a good chance for you to get some decent momentum up out of this. Uh, and now you, you, what you do is if, you're, if you trade candle to candle style in your longer term, you just move your stop up below each new candlesticks low. And, and that allows it to, uh, to continue to run and, and lock in some gains fairly quickly. So uh, now, as far as the, the short term stuff, if you're if you're day trading it, um, you know, you can still take that. The, we got the breakout above here. Now your stop would have to be below. Technically, your stop would have to be below here because this is your last true pivot. Um, but I'd be I wouldn't be too upset if you put it right here as, as both of those are still going to be pretty valid uh, for stop loss points. Canadian dollar. The Canadian dollar, uh, now, this is an interesting case of if we would have had a breakout trade set up right here, we would have been a false breakout, right, in and stopped back out. This is not where our breakout is because this is, this is not a true setup for a breakout. What's the difference? Well, let's go to the four-hour chart, and looking at the four-hour chart, this is just a better picture for a potential breakout short, and it's not there. We haven't quite gotten there yet to, to, uh, to, to use it. Looking at it on the daily, um, you know that level would be below this this daily chart here, and we are putting in lower swing lows. So I think this one gives us room to roam at least down into this region here. All right, looking at our British pound, Japanese yen. So uh, in the Great British pound, we had a little bit of uh, a little bit of a move up into this region here where this is actually a, a decent uh, you know potential breakout area. I did not have it identified ahead of time though so I'm certainly not gonna not gonna claim that one. Um, but if I zoom in a little bit and see, I can see that my candlesticks are starting to get real tight and real wicky. But down here is a nice little potential reversal area. So it's it's a fairly small range. Let me maximize this cell, make it a little bit easier for everyone to see. There's a little potential range right here. Um, once again, we, we put it in purple because it's a 15 minute chart. It's a smaller probability. One thing I want you to notice is I don't really ever go to the five or the three. I'm, I'm staying to the bigger time periods because the bigger time periods are going to give me a higher degree of probability. Japanese yen, we had a potential reversal here. This is one of those ones where they say, ha ha, you want to get filled? Psych. And it did not get us filled on that one as we're still waiting on that to, uh, uh, to get filled. There's nothing in there. Copper. Copper basically said, hey, I'm going to punch you in the face today uh, as it just blew right through the area. So that one uh, absolutely was a failure. Uh, did not make uh, did not make anybody happy. Mostly me. Uh, oh no, that's not true. It made somebody happy. Whoever bought down here and sold up here was very very happy. But that wasn't me. Uh, and so uh, copper came back and and snuck up on us. And then that gas, we still have this area down in here uh, as our uh, potential reversal. And I want to say yesterday we had looked at uh, soy. <clears throat> Uh, and we'd had a little bit of a level here in soy, uh, but it's not anywhere near that for a potential move as of yet. And I have gotten a little bit of a request to look at Bitcoin. Um, so for those of you that are Bitcoin traders, here are, and I only really look at Bitcoin futures because that's that's really, I, I don't have, I keep meaning to open up an account and haven't done it yet, but this is what Bitcoin looks like uh, on the futures chart. So Sitting here on the Bitcoin futures chart on the daily, here's what my my mind immediately gets pulled to is that descending triangle pattern and slowing of momentum. Um, that's what my mind immediately goes to. So uh, this looks to me like there's a potential breakdown that could occur. And when I go to the hourly chart, um, you know, I could even have a little breakdown inside of this bigger daily breakdown. So that's really the breakout that I would look to see is a breakout from here uh, down to around the 60, well, call it 69, 69.35 to be on the safe side is you're probably going to have a little bit of, uh, of, of reversal in here, but you can definitely get a little bit of a move down on, into that region. Now, I will tell you, full disclosure, I don't trade this at all. Um, but I'm just looking at it from a pure technical perspective, and I know a lot of people had asked, so I wanted to make sure that I commented on it. You know, <clears throat> you know, looking at it from a daily chart, 
you know, it's come down from 20,000. It launched at 20,000. It's now sitting at 7,600. Um, got as low as 5,900. Now, just keep that in mind that that it, <clears throat> that's that's basically a 75% drop uh, in a few weeks. And so... Can it go back up? You bet your assets it can. Uh, do I see that happening today, tomorrow, anytime soon? I don't really have enough insight to, to give you that. I mean, there's a lot more news on Bitcoin lately, specifically around government regulation of it. So just be aware of it before you add it to your trading repertoire. So until tomorrow, everybody, I hope you have a great trading day. If there's anything you need, please feel free to reach out. Chuck at IIEFinancial.com. Thanks so much. See you soon.